Grady Dick has made a huge leap, jumping up to 20 points per game on 58% true shooting. He also leads the NBA in total volume of off-ball screens as a cutter, using 177 of them. Among the 27 players who have drawn at least 60 closeouts, he ranks 7th in points per chance. He's also 5th in the NBA in squishes. He also takes some of the most contested shots in the NBA, and the average speed and release of his three-point shot is currently faster than Klay Thompson and Buddy Heald, one of the fastest in the NBA. He is breaking out, ladies and gentlemen. He is doing the damn thing. And what I want to do is focus in on the play that works best for him and the Raptors. How do I put this? 60% of the time, it works every time and before we get into all that make sure to like the video subscribe comment all that stuff that pushes this great work out to other people thank you so much let's jump into it a lot of you guys might know this one it's a fairly famous play called the spain pick and roll they call it stack in the nba and it includes a back screener to free up the roller to the rim and a counter that is often used is called spain leak where that back screener pops out to the three-point line and this is the variation that they most often run for grady dick the main benefit is if you have a strong driver like RJ Barrett, teams have to load up to try and stop that drive, and a guy like Grady Dick, who's so fantastic at shooting the basketball, will slide into open space for open three-pointers. And since in the NBA so many teams run Spain and defend against it, the Raptors have to disguise how they start it and build in counters. Their favorite one so far has been this flare screen for Grady, which he can take into open space as a shooter, or that he can take downhill as a cutter. If a guy like Christian Brown gets caught up on the screen like he does here, for example, Grady can take it right to the bucket because Michael Porter Jr. doesn't want to tag from the corner or rotate over. And here's Jamal Murray fighting through that flare, Grady having to plant that screen, and the Nuggets being so preoccupied with the three players, Davion, Grady, and Pirtle involved in the action that Ochai gets to cut freely along the baseline for a layup. It's only because of the scoring gravity of Pirtle and Grady that this is able to happen. And this one is my favorite variation. It's where Grady is chased successfully around the screen, has to plant the screen for Jakob, and slides out. He draws a closeout, and as I said at the top, Grady Dick has been one of the best players in all all of the NBA at attacking closeouts. He has tremendous touch, he's comfortable pulling up from the mid-range, he can score at all three levels, he has the size, and he's always been great at identifying his defender's top foot so that he can attack and get them to turn their hips for his advantage. He's a special player in this way, and his ability to draw closeouts because of how great a shooter he is well, this is a perfect action for him. And here, another option, another disguised play for the Raptors to get into Spain. They're running a Chicago action out of the corner. That is a screen followed by a handoff. Only Grady is going to ghost this screen and assume his position as the back screener for Jakob Pertl. Now, since the Nuggets want to get the ball out of RJ's hands with the blitz here, Christian Brown would typically stay in the lane to protect against this pass. However, Grady Dick has so much gravity as a shooter and as a scorer out of closeouts that he trails him, leaving the entrance pass to Jakob and the layup. And here the Nuggets do a better job of Brown staying back and eventually getting covered by Peyton Watson in the corner, but that means he's late to catch up to Grady, who catches, stutter rips, and gets the foul. This one, the drive goes through, ball goes baseline to corner, you get into some of this read and react basketball, and the ball finds Grady, who, as we know, is a very capable shot maker and hits an insane fader over a great defender in McDaniels. And this plays in Spain, but it simply exhibits why teams are so hesitant to allow Grady to come clean off of flare screens, choosing rather to allow him to cut downhill without the ball. Because he's a great shooter and he can bang a triple off a of flare screen. It's that easy. And just to hammer home this point too, this is Grady ghosting a screen, coming off of a flare, and attacking that closeout. This is why teams have a lot of trouble. These, this isn't Spain pick and roll, but this is why Spain pick and roll runs so well with Grady. And just to show you another pet action of Grady's to exhibit why he's been so impressive, they run this screen to get him coming out of the corner and run an angled pick and roll for him. Now, he just gets into open interpretive play here, uses a throw ahead dribble, gets baseline, hits an incredible fader, but they do run this play for him quite often because they like to give him an opportunity to work with the screen with the ball in his hands. And right now, since he is such a great shooter and he's so good getting to his spot and hitting his shot, 
It's just he's mostly taking these opportunities to reject the screen and to get into open space. And teams, they have trouble with that because his first step isn't incredible, but he's a very accomplished scorer and he has great footwork out of the triple threat. So he's able to get a head start on a lot of guys. And since he's so comfortable with that pull up, he's getting to spots. He's able to use an extra dribble because players have to tense up with the expectation of a pull up at any time. And sometimes that means he can get to the rim. But yeah, I mostly did want to talk about Spain leak, the variation of the Spain pick and roll that they run for Grady. He's in the position that Emmanuel quickly plays in a lot of the time or did last year when the Raptors would run this action. I'm interested to see once quickly is back if they put quickly in that role, considering how great he's been attacking closeouts and the fact that he is scoring capably from all three levels and this early into the season. I know it's only, you know, nine games, but a nine game stretch of 20 points per game and three level scoring. This is something that a lot of players don't even have in their toolkit, but he's brought it immediately this year. And it, it makes you want to consider a lot of different things that he can provide and should probably make Darko Ryakovic think about how he's using Grady and think about it really hard. Well, that's about it for this little video essay. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, try and keep an eye out for this play. I'm sure you'll be able to recognize it and be a little nerd about it. You know, when you're watching this with people, uh, tell them like, hey, this is what this play is called. This is why it works. That's always fun to do. Or if you're just watching by yourself, put it on Twitter and tag me. Be like Spain leak uh, at Sam Folk. Uh, I always enjoy that kind of stuff. This is something I've been doing with listeners, readers, viewers for forever. So yeah. Um, just keep enjoying the game. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed yourself. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Love you lots. Bye. <laughs>